Hello everyone, I am Vigor Singh and today we will be discussing the second problem of the CP31 sheet under the 1300 rated parameter. <clears throat> so as you can see this is the CP31 sheet and 1300 rated problems have been selected and this is the second problem, find the different ones. You are given an array A of n integers and q queries. Every query is represented by two integers L and R. Your task is to find for each query two indices i and j or determine they don't exist such that i and j are between l and r and ai is not equal to aj. Okay, so this is what the problem says. So let's try to understand this with an example. Okay, so if you look at the first example, you're given 5 which is the length of the array and then the array has these values, right? And then you're given 3 that is number of queries. 3 is the number of queries. And for each query, you are given L and R. So the L and R are 1, 5, 1, 2 and 1, 3. So we have 1, 5, 1, 2 and 1, 3. Okay. Now, what does L and R represent? If for the given query, you are looking at this L to R subarray. You are just looking at that subarray. And what do you have to do within that subarray? Let's my L and R are 1 and 3 currently. Okay. So this is my L and R. So my current subarray is this. In this, I have to print two values i comma j such that a of i is not equal to a of j. Or I don't have to actually print this. I have to actually print. Is it possible to find two i comma j? Okay, I have to actually print them. Sorry. So we have to print two values i comma j such that a of i is not equal to a of j. Or if it doesn't exist, we have to print minus one twice. That is, let's. That is like if there is an example like this, 1, 2, so we are just looking at this subarray. Now over here I cannot choose any i comma j between these two values such that a of i is not equal to a j. So in that case I will print minus 1 and minus 1, right? And they are not comma separated in the answer. So I will just print minus 1 space minus 1, else I will print i space j, okay? So this is what the problem states. Now the problem statement is clear. Now let's try to understand the expected time complexity for this problem. So we are given that t is still 10 raised to 4, n is still 2 into 10 raised to 5, a goes still 10 raised to 6, there are 2 into 10 raised to 5 queries and the sum of n and sum of q don't exceed 2 into 10 raised to 5. So this is what is given to us. So we know one second in code forces corresponds to approximately 10 raised to 8 operations. Right. We are given n corresponds to or n rather goes up to 2 into 10 raised to 5 and q also goes still 2 into 10 raised to 5. Right. So, anything of the sort of order of n plus q or order of n plus q log n, this thing should work in our time complexity. But if we go anything of the order of n square or order of q into n, then this will give us TLE, right? These values will go up to 10 raised to 10, which will give us TLE, right? So this is our expected time complexity that with for each query, we need some logarithmic or constant time computation. We cannot iterate over the entire n. We cannot go q into n for our overall complexity because that will give us TLE. Okay. So that's it for the expected time complexity. Now let's try to solve the problem. Okay. So let's take the initial example that we saw 1, 1, 2, 1 and 1. Okay. And I'm given some range L comma R, right? I'm given L comma R. Now in this L comma R, I have to choose two values I and J such that AI is not equal to J A J, right? Now we have two variables, right? We have to choose two values. Let's try to fix one of the values. Okay. Let's try to fix any one of the values. Let's say I will choose that one of the values I'll pick will always be R. Okay. So one of my values is R. Okay. So my I is equal to R. Let's say that. Okay. So when I have this, I just need to find that in this new, in this subarray for the current query, is there any element such that A of J is not equal to A of R, right? So instead of two variables, I comma J, I have just reduced it to one variable. That is, I have to just find one J and my other value can always be R, right? One value can be R. And I can just prove it very simply that if I cannot find any j, 
that is if i cannot find any j something like i have 1 1 1 and 1 and this is my r okay this is my r if i cannot find any j that means all values in this sub array are equal and when all values in this sub array are equal i have to print minus 1 and minus 1 right it's a very straightforward thing so i can prove that yes i can always choose a of r as one value and still if there is a solution i'll find the solution else i can print minus 1 and minus 1 right because the only case when i will not find a solution that would be when the entire sub array is different as soon as there is at least one value which is not equal to a of r i can print that okay so i hope this much is clear so we have reduced our i comma j that we have to find to only one value that we have to find only i or we have to find only j we have fixed i to r now even for this if i try to iterate over all the values in the sub array we might that might not be an optimal solution right let's say my ln r are given 1 comma n all q times okay all q times i have given 1 comma n as my ln r okay then in this case my overall complexity will become q into n right because if i try to iterate over the entire sub array that is 1 comma n the entire array i'll iterate it q times so that overall complexity will give me q into n which will give me tle right so i cannot just iterate over all the values in the sub array i have to find some optimal solution even after choosing r so how can i do this okay so let's look at this sub array i have this index r let's say for this r i have somehow calculated the previous index x that is different to it or the first index before r which has a of x not equal to a of r okay see right now i'm not looking at l i'm just saying that for each r or for each value for this r i have somehow calculated the first value that a of x is not equal to r okay and let's say over here okay let's say this value at r so let's say this is index r and this value at r is y so all these values in between are y and this is some different value y dash okay so this is the first value that is different from y okay so x is the first value before r which is a of x not equal to a of r this thing i have calculated will this help me solve the problem well if i have this information then i just need to look at possible possibility of where l is with respect to x i l can be either before x or it can be after x right it can either be before x or after x let's say l is greater than x that is l is before x okay so when l is before x i am looking at something like this okay something like this where all my values are y, y right all my values in the array are y because i know x is the first value before y for which a of x is not equal to a of r or a of x is not equal to y right so that is the first value so if l is greater than x then i know there is no value which will be different from y so i cannot find a solution so i will print minus 1 and minus 1 right this is my first case that is for l greater than x i can print minus 1 and minus 1 right now let's look at the second case where l is less than or equal to x that is l is to this side okay so let's just form this array again so i have y dash at x and then i have sometimes y dot 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 and then i have y at r okay and i'm looking at l less than equal to x now for this case my l is somewhere over here right or it can be even equal to x so i know that and a solution will always exist and that possible solution could be x itself right i can print x and r see x is the first value where a of x is not equal to a of r right so i know a of x this condition is satisfied so my i can be x or my l can be x uh, j can be x and a can be uh, i can be r or vice versa whatever my i comma j can be x and r right and i can print these two values and my condition of a of i not equal to a of j would be satisfied right and i know a of i i and j are within the bounds of l and r because l is to the left of x or l is equal to x and similarly r is equal to r or r is equal to i whatever so this would be my solution that okay if l is less than equal to x i can print x comma r and if l is greater than x i can just print minus 1 and minus 1 now the only part of the solution that remains is how will i calculate this x okay and that too i have to calculate it in like for every value right for every index i i will need to calculate 
its previous x, right? For every possible r, I have to calculate the x. How can I do this? What I can do is, see, for a continuous segment, let's say I have the same values. Okay. So initially, for the first value, the previous different value would be, let's say, minus 1, right? Because for the first element, there cannot be a value that is different from this element, right? And let's, let's have a different value as well. So let's have this 2 over here. So let's have this 2 over here and then this 2 over here again. And then let's say another 2 over here. Okay. And then I have a 3. Let's try to see how I'll form this previous x or how do I get the x that I have seen till now. Okay. So for the first element, I know it will be minus 1. That is, it is not possible. Now, for the second element, it is same as the first element, right? It is same as the first element. So I know whatever, see, these two values are same. So the previous x for this value, x for this i would be same of x for i minus 1. That is, if a of i is equal to a of i plus 1, then my x value for i plus 1 would be equal to x value of i, right? Because these two values are simple, same. So whatever there was x for this value would be same for this value. So I'll get minus 1 over here as well, right? So let's, this might overlap with each other. So let's just write this up here. So I get minus 1 for this, minus 1 for this, right? Now when I come to the next value, that is 2. Now, a of i is not equal to a of i plus 1, right? So, we have this next case of else. That is, a of i is not equal to i plus 1. So, let's just write the what is happening here. We don't need to write the condition for else if we are writing in the code. But just for our understanding right now, I am writing that a of i is not equal to a of i plus 1. Okay, I have this thing right now. Now, what happens in this case? See, this value is different. The previous value is different. So can I say x of i plus 1 would just be i? See, the previous value is different. And what is x? The previous different value, right? So the very previous value or the very adjacent value is different. So I can have a of x of i plus 1 to be i itself. That is, let's say one base indexing. Let's take one base indexing. So this is index 1, this is index 2. So over here I'll put 2. That is, my x value, my x value for this index 3 is so for i equal to 2, my x is 3. Now again, my next value when I come to it, my a of i is equal to a of i minus 1. Or I have this condition a of i equal to a of i plus 1. I can just put x value as 2. Right? I'll just copy the previous x value. Again, I'll copy the previous x value. And when I'll come to this 3, I'll come to this else part where a of i is not equal to a of i plus 1. So it will just be the previous value. That is 5. Right? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So over here I'll have 5. So this is my value of x array. And once I have this, I have a very simple condition. I will check x of r, right? Or rather r minus 1, we will see the uh, 1 base and 0 base index handling in the code itself. But for now, let's just assume everything is 1 base indexing. So I'll just check x of r. I'll check x of r. And then I will see that if x of r is greater, if l is greater than x of r, then I have to print minus 1 and minus 1. Else, I have to print x and r, right? This is what we had, right? If l is greater than the x value for that r, then I will print minus 1 and minus 1. Else, I will print x and r. So, once I have calculated it using this logic, I can just directly use the value or the vector of x or the previous different value. Uh, that is, x can be the previous, can be seen as the previous different value, right? So, just the previous different value, I'll just check it with that and I'll get the answer. So I hope the solution is clear to you. Let's move on to the code of the solution. So this is the code. So I've taken number of test cases as input initially, and then I've taken n and the array as input. Okay. Now, first thing I'm doing is for the array, I'm calculating the previous different array. That is, I'm pre-computing this value. That is the x we had, right? Previous different. x represented the previous different element. So I created the previous different, which will have initially, initially I initialized it as minus 1, right? So, why have I initialized it as minus 1? Because, as we saw, that for the first value, 
our value or if all values in the array are equal they sh- the previous difference should be minus 1 that is why i have initialized it as minus 1 and i have started i from 1 i less than n i plus plus i have started i from 1 because i am checking a of i with a of i minus 1 right so here i showed you with in this example or in the explanation i showed you with i and i plus 1 but i have coded it with i and i minus 1 right so there will be a very minor differences that is if a of i is not equal to a of i minus 1 my previous value would just become uh, i minus 1 and my previous different of i would be previous right so my previous is minus 1 initially that is for the zeroth value it is minus 1 and every time i'm getting a different value i'm updating whatever the previous should be right and then i'm making it previous right another way to write it could have been that when the condition is true when this condition is true that is in in this if in itself i could write previous different of i directly equal to i minus 1 so i could just write something like previous different of i equal to i minus 1 in my l in my if condition and in the else part i could do previous different of i previous different of i would be equal to previous different of i minus 1 so this is another thing that i could have done right this is another thing that i could have done but that is not what i have done i have directly just taken instead that i am maintaining a previous variable which will store the value that is it will get updated when whenever a of i is not equal to i minus 1 it will get updated to i minus 1 otherwise it will remain the same and then previous different of i would be previous so this is how i'm calculating the previous different array then i'm taking the queries as input and for each query uh, i'm taking l and r as input and then i'm just checking previous different of r minus 1 so note i'm taking r minus 1 because over here we have taken zero based indexing entirely right so i have to like maintain another thing like what you could do it do is soon after the input you could just do like l minus minus and r minus minus like this okay so this is one thing you could have done and then you don't need to do this r minus 1 and l minus 1 handling everywhere but over here i have done that so i have taken r if previous different of r minus 1 is greater than equal to l minus 1 i'll print out r and then previous different of r minus 1 plus 1 this plus 1 is again because i've done zero based indexing so to handle the one based indexing in our solution i'm printing r and previous difference of r minus 1 and then a plus 1 and otherwise i'm just printing minus 1 and, and minus 1 that is if l is greater than previous different or l plus minus 1 in our case is greater than previous different of r minus 1 so that's it for the code discussion let's understand the time complexity of the solution so we are taking input which will be in order of n right now previous different calculation over here we are just running in loop of order of n and inside it we are we are not performing any uh, loop or anything we are just doing simple operation so it will be of order of n and for each query the outer loop will run in order of n for overall queries and for each query if you'll note we are just checking values in the array based on the index so we are solving each query in order of one time itself so overall time complexity would just become order of q plus n right so the time complexity overall will become order of n plus q okay and for the space complexity we have taken array of size n as input and then our previous different array is also of size n but there's nothing else of extra space for each query we are not we are just taking simple or uh, variables so our overall time or overall space complexity will just become order of n so that's it for the space and time complexity discussion i hope you were able to understand the solution thank you